The RV Show USA is brought to you by Flagstaff, Rockwood, building better RVs, making smarter RVers. You know, when it comes to uh, RVs and technology, solar nowadays is all the craze. I mean, solar coupled with electric vehicles. I mean, can you imagine having an EV, a solar powered RV that you could literally stay off the grid pretty much indefinitely? How cool would that be? But has has solar come far enough? Have EVs come far enough to make them practical for ordinary folks like you and me? Well, that is the question that electricity expert Mike Sokol has been exploring with something that he is calling the Go Green RV Project. And I think it is really, really interesting. Joining us from the Hershey RV Show in PA, we have Mike standing by. How are things up there, my friend? Uh, storming right now. Really? Oh, yeah, lightning, TV keeps cutting off, so I'm stuck in a hotel room with no television. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> well, hopefully you've got a good Internet connection. You want to tell everybody what you're doing up in Hershey, Mike? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm teaching uh, my RV electricity classes. So these, um, I, I just did a six-hour class for, I think, 70 RV technicians on wow. Tuesday. Um, you know, advanced troubleshooting techniques and that sort of thing. So, and today was my first one hour class, um, basic RV electricity for consumers where we show them, you know, pedestals and, you know, how to check for them and check for hot skin voltages and surge protectors and that sort of thing. It, it is so important to know that kind of stuff. It's not the sexy kind of topics that people like to hear about it. It's just the stuff that can save your life. That's all. That's how important it, it, it is. That, that's, that's all it is. Exactly right. And not only, it can save your whole camping season because if uh, if you blow up your RV's electrical system through, um, you know, misconnection, uh, even though it may not be life-threatening to you, what can happen is uh, you can lose your whole camping season. It's hard to get these things fixed. Yes, it is, especially now when the, the shops are all backed up. All right, so I know you that you are neck deep in your research project on EVs and solar-powered RVs. Uh, did you bring your travel trailers up there and your EVs for display? Up to I did not this time. There was no room up here. Uh, Believe it or not, Hershey is slammed. I mean, it's – and they said that's no, good. no. That's a, yeah, that's a good thing. I did not say this is a bad thing. Um, and I actually went through security to this morning to see what it was like. And it took me over half an hour just to walk in through security. So wow. it's, it's, I mean, this is, it, it feels like a real show. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Thank goodness. Well, you know, I, I know you started out on your, your research project with some smaller, uh, EVs and some smaller, uh, travel trailers. You want to tell us kind of what you started with? I think it was a, like the safari condo or alto condo or right um the first one i got in i had a safari condo uh alto trailer and this is a really cool teardrop it's it goes down low right now you can see it's in low position yeah um but you push a button and the thing opens up like origami um <laughs> and it's six foot six inside wow it's a teardrop you can walk around with headroom it's pretty amazing so uh, and it's all panoramic glass around you it's a very nice unit uh, weighs about 1,800 pounds. Um, this is part of their new series that they've added 400 watts of solar panels on that uh, 200 watts, or two, excuse me, a, a two, yeah, 200 amp hour uh, lithium battery and a few other things just to make it uh, happy. So for instance, it has an optional 12 volt DC refrigerator. So this is, you know, this is the trend we're seeing about boondocking uh, for, you know, for people that, that, that can't get in into a campground. A lot of RVs have been sold, and sometimes there's no place to take them. So, so uh, what what the vehicle you're pulling that travel trailer with is, is an electric vehicle. Tell me about that real quickly. Right. Now, that's a Volkswagen ID4. So it's a, a midsize SUV, all electric, 75-amp-hour uh, battery in it. Um, it only has a Class 2 hitch. It's really rated to po pull, you know, couple thousand, 2,200 pounds, you know, 2,400 pounds, something like yeah. that. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty close to the limit of what it is, although it, it's pretty interesting. Handling was really quite good with this, and acceleration was surprisingly good. Um, so I, I was pretty impressed with that part of it. So w when you did, and I know you're still conducting your research, when you did your research, what have you found uh, in terms of that particular unit without the trailer, and then you put the trailer up. How much range can you get? Talk to us about the, the, that. The, the range is the holy grail of all electric vehicles right now. Right. 
Um, and I am impressed. That thing out of the gate, when you don't have a trailer holding you back, is a solid 250 to 275 mile range. And that's, that's me good. blasting down the highway 70, 75 miles an hour. So that, that is really quite good. And the acceleration, even though this is not really a muscle car, this thing really rolls. Um, but now when you start hooking a trailer up to it, this is where you wow. start getting these range losses. And this is across the industry. This is not a, a problem Yikes. just in Volkswagen. So, and, and I did these same uh, loops, you know, around. So, you know, it, it, you could lose, um, generally speaking, about half of your, uh, your normal driving range very easily. That's not good. No, no, it is not a good thing. That's one of the disappointing parts of all of this. Um, but, you know, it's not about the weight. It's about the wind. And so one of the things that I think RV manufacturers have not addressed is they've hang all kinds of doodads on the top of their RVs. Uh huh. So you've got your air conditioner up there and you've got your vents up there and you've got heaven only knows what up there, racks up there. Um, and what you're trying to do is, is make them smoother so they have better, better aerodynamics. Right, um, right. And, but, you know, to, you know, to the, you know, the, the, the RV manufacturers themselves are asking me these questions about what they can do to make them more slippery. So I'm, I'm at least getting some attention from the industry, which is my whole re reason for doing this. So is, is the uh, reduction in range something that you anticipate is worse than expected? About what you expected. Uh, you know, I had people telling me that, and, you know, I didn't quite believe it until I actually did it. I thought that maybe I would have a 30% reduction in range. Um, but now, now I, I think it's quite realistic. Most of these are going to be a 50% reduction in range. There's a couple of tricks, though, that could be done that would improve that. I was going to ask you about that. But, but you know what? First, let's let's go to your second test uh, travel trailer because it, it looks to me to be more aerodynamic, which probably has a more positive uh, right. you know, effect on the the range that you can go. Tell us about that. So this is a, a, a little uh, my pod, um, which is really you know it's only like eight or nine hundred pounds kind of thing. Um, it's just but, big enough for me and, and two of, what maybe maybe one of my chihuahuas, <laughs> <It's a> tiny <laughs> little bugger. But but the idea here is I, you know you can look at it. it's not really any taller than the Volkswagen it's not any wider than the Volkswagen so it's within yeah. the slipstream and if you can put the next slide up the numbers uh, you can see. Uh, at 65 miles an hour, I only had a 33% loss. So, you know, I had a 182 miles available at 60 wow. miles per hour. You know, I had almost 200 miles available. Um, so this is what I was kind of hoping, even with something slippery like that uh, Alto. But, but again, it was wider than the, uh, the Volkswagen. So, uh, again, it was outside of the slipstream. Is there anything that... I mean, today that a vehicle manufacturer could do to increase the range. I mean, battery power. I, oh, I don't know. golly, yes. Uh, okay, so of course they not, can. No, so of course they can. Well, now, and now this is an experiment that I, I want to try to get a part of it. So, um, is it Edwin Heimer, um, the, the Heimer Group in Germany? They did this experiment um, within the last year. They they had a full size RV that uh, they put traction motors in where in the wheels. So this was motor generators are in the wheels and they put a 75 amp hour battery inside of the RV itself. So the RV pushed itself down the road while you were towing it. And they did that with no reduction in the mileage capacity of the electric tow vehicle. It was pretty wow. darn, darn amazing. Yeah. And so a couple of little tricks, but I looked at that and I said, well, heck, I could do that. That's that's actually makes a lot of sense. Um, and this was a full size, you know, what do they call those um, canned ham style RVs? It wasn't a yeah. little one. I mean, it was a big one. Um, and they hooked it up to an Audi um, e-tron, I think it is, or e-tron or whatever the name of it is. And they drove around the Swiss Alps and they still got a 250 mile range out of it because the RV was taking care of itself. So, so in your research project, I know you, ne you never seem to get finished because you're always researching, <laughs> but what are two or three things, the biggest things that you've learned about EVs so far? The acceleration on these things, even with a trailer, is amazing. I mean, and, and it's an instantaneous acceleration. So when you step on, I hate to say step on the gas, step on the electrons, what is it that you do in an electric vehicle? When you, when you hit the throttle on that thing, it 
it jumps, it goes. It doesn't have like the engine doesn't have to wind up and then go through the torque converter mm -hmm. and do all that other stuff. So it is really instantaneous. And, and it feels like these things can easily handle, you know, a few thousand pounds hanging behind you in terms of acceleration. So that part is really quite good. I was impressed. And the dynamic braking of it is like an exhaust brake when you're going down a mountain. Yeah. You don't have to ride the brakes. It's putting the electricity back into your battery. Wow. I mean, that's, I mean, I mean, that stuff is really good. Uh, Ford just uh, patented, or they just released, there was a leak on the patent, the ability to have the uh, electric vehicle, like an EV, if you're, if, if it's at a towed position behind your regular one, then right. you can recharge it while you're driving down the road by, from the wheels. So the, so you could actually charge up your vehicle behind you. And of course, this is the opposite of what we're talking about here. Yeah, but yeah. the manufacturers now are starting to look at, the vehicle manufacturers are starting to look at the RV industry. Before that, it seemed like they weren't even aware of us. Uh, let me ask you, let me switch gears for a second and, and ask you, it seems, or make a comment. It seems to me that the solar advancements that have been made in travel trailers for the ordinary person like me, <laughs> the average RV are, are much, uh, it's much better for us to get a solar powered uh, travel trailer than it is to get an EV and try to tow our oh, travel yeah. trailer. The EV stuff is still a little ways off. It just is. You know, I wanted to get ahead of this because, you know, all the manufacturers on TV are starting to promote these things like crazy. Yeah. And I wanted to find out whether this is ready or not. So um, an EV, you know, a, a, a tow vehicle, we're not ready for prime time yet. But man, we're out, we're we're getting close. But solar powered RVs, and what we should say is, you know, RVs that have got solar panels, larger lithium batteries, hybrid inverters, those things now are coming on strong, and I think they're brilliant uh, because you can, in fact, boondock for days without having to run a generator if you do this right. What What are some of the challenges that I might expect if I've got one of these solar equipped travel trailers? I mean, is there a steep learning curve for me? No, no, uh, no, no, no. The um, so so the the Geo Pro that I've got that I'm still experimenting with, you know, the Rockwood Geo Pro, right. um, that thing it's pretty much plug and play. It's got almost 600 watts of solar on the roof. It has a 400 amp hour uh, battery in it. Wow. It will run the air conditioner for four hours just on the battery. Um, and you don't even really know what it's doing. There's a little panel that you can control it, but you don't have to know a lot. Um, and there's virtually no maintenance that you have to do on that kind of a battery or there's no generator to worry about. Uh, so they're making this simpler. And I think this is a lot better. Um, they've been paying attention to a lot of these forums where people have been doing these DIY projects themselves, to, but not very successfully. Right, uh, right. So I think this is much better to have it all integrated together. Um, and, and so it's never going to be quite as easy as your home power. You've always got to still consider about what you're doing for, you know, right. turning on a bunch of things at the same time. But it, it re now what you want to watch out for is a number of the manufacturers have slapped a little 100 watt solar panel on the roof and they say that that's going to do stuff. That's enough to keep your batteries charged up, you know, yeah. when, when, when you're sitting there doing nothing else. It is not enough to actually run anything significantly. So you got to start thinking about 600, 800, 1,000 watts worth of solar panels to make it worth your while. You, you know, uh, there's I could ask you a jillion questions about this, but, but what I want to know um, is when it comes to the practicality of EVs right now, um, are they a practical? You think from a, a dollar value, are they practical? I think not for a towing vehicle, but as a regular runaround vehicle, I got to tell you, I mean, I was very impressed with this Volkswagen. Um, you know, there, especially if you set up a home charging system, you would never have to really worry about going to, to sit for 30 minutes and charge it up at a fast charging station. It would charge itself easily overnight. Um, they've got great, I mean, they, they have great acceleration. In fact, it's almost a little too much. If you're in traffic and really? you stomp on that throttle, you almost run over the person in front of you. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 they go. And so from that standpoint, I, I think that they're, they're really, they're really quite good. They're, and they're, they're getting there, but I think some of the marketing guys have overstepped their, 
the, the actualities of these things. When they say yeah. that you could take a Ford F-150 Lightning and power your home for days, I would not power my home for days off of an electric vehicle. I would get a hybrid truck like I already had, that Ford F-150 Power Boost, gasoline mm-hmm. electric. And then you could power your house for days. You let me so, let me be a, a devil's advocate here. Charging stations. You sent a couple of images of charging stations. Uh, were you able to find adequate places to get some juice when you got low? I mean, I've got off. I found places all over the uh, places all over chargers all over the place to do this. There's no single app that will tell you where where they all are. That's one of the challenges. Uh, so you yeah. you kind of have to snoop around. The biggest problem is I have, have not found a single one that you could have a trailer hooked up to your electric pickup truck or electric EV or, or your electric SUV and charge. So you've got to go to a parking lot, disconnect the trailer and set it there and then drive over to the charging station. And that is a real issue that I've been discussing yeah, with Electrify America. That's just silly. How long does it take to charge up? And about what does it cost when you're, you know, you're, I mean, you go to the gas stations, you know, you're probably out in five minutes max. And you're okay. Full. That's one of the downsides if you play, go, go to fast charger. So fast charger, um, you can take 30 to 45 minutes to, to recharge yours quite easily, but you've got to sit there and do something, right? Or find something yeah. to do. Um, but the good side of this, and I started running some numbers on this. If you are charging up at home, or not if you're charging in a fast charger, if you're charging up at home, and so it takes six or eight hours to do it overnight. You don't care. Your price per mile compared to gasoline is about one third of the cost. One third hmm. of the cost of gasoline. Now, one of the issues with that is gasoline has road taxes built into it because, well, you got to pay for the roads, right? But in your electric vehicle, you're kidding me. You're getting around the fact that you're not paying any road taxes. I'm pretty not sure the yet. government will figure that not out. Yet. They will figure that out real, yeah. real quick. But, um, you know, so the guys that say that they're too expensive to charge up, if you go to a fast charger, you're paying like 40 cents per kilowatt hour, or you can, compared to maybe 10 cents per kilowatt hour at your house, at home, at your house right? Yeah. But your house is never going to be able to charge that thing up in 30 minutes. Um, right. But if you could plug it in at night and re- recharge it, you would absolutely be absolutely fine. Uh, one of the things that Volkswagen has done with, uh, as you know, because they actually built the Electrify America group, you get three years of free charging when you plug, if you go into Electrify America chargers. Wow. With the Volkswagen I- ID4. And I luckily have a Walmart with a bunch of fast charging stations about a mile from my house. So you go plug the thing in, you go into Walmart, you kick around, do a little shopping, come on out. I, I still wish they would build like a little kiosk out there so you could sit and not have to sit in the car. Yeah, well, <laughs> Put a little I, roof I guarantee over you it. those are coming. Last question, uh, where's all this uh, juice going to come from? I mean, where's all this electric, electricity uh, well, going to well, come I, from? I, I, I'm, I'm not, I am not sure yet. I'm talking to a couple of my guys that are in some of the bigger companies out there. Um, there, are, there are a number of considerations uh, for all of that, you know, turbine, air turbine stuff is the big windmills, the big windmills. Um, you need to have uh, a be in a windy area. So around here, they don't make, you know, I should say in Maryland, they don't make a lot of sense um, in, in terms of being able to make money with them. But still, you know, they're an important contributor to renewable energy, I think. Um, and you can see that's a, a shot out in um, Ohio. Uh, just driving right along the interstate, and there, there's dozens of wind turbines out there. So um, when you go to Holland, these guys put wind turbines up in their own backyards like this. It's a completely different thing. Of course, they're used to windmills out yeah. there. Um, so that's one <laughs> way to look do look a little bit different from their windmills. Yes, <laughs> yes, they do. But, but solar farms are another one. You know, solar panels and, and tons of them. But there's so much misinformation out yeah. there about about you know wind turbines and solar panels. This is why I'm trying to gather real info um, and set up you know and start doing some articles and videos about that just to kind of get the real numbers out there that everyone can evaluate for themselves. So the Go Green RV project, you're happy with it so far, and it sounds like you're really onto something that's going to last a long time. A lot I, of I am very happy. Ford has promised me uh, F-150 Lightning as soon as one's available. GM has promised me a. Um, their um, 
oh gosh, what's the, the Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, the Hummer, a, a GM Hummer, really <laughs> electric Hummer. Wow. Yeah, when it's out, it's, as soon as one is available to the press, I'll get one. And uh, I think I have a line on a Tesla Cybertruck, just for grins, a thing that looks like a spaceship. Wow, the one we all so, love to hate. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, hey, listen, like a, we we, we yeah. got to let you go. Uh, okay. Have a great time in Hershey. Let's get together. Uh, I don't know, three, four, five weeks, and see where you're at. What do you say? That sounds great, Alan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Have fun in Hershey. Okay, we'll do. Thanks. All right, adios. So there you go, folks. I love the uh, personally. I love the concept of EVs. I can't really embrace them as much as I want to, though. Uh, maybe I just need to learn a little bit more about them. But I will tell you this: the travel trailers that are being all decked out for staying off the grid are very, very cool. If you'd like to keep up with Mike Sokol and his Go Green RV project, you can find him on YouTube. Hope we can put the link up in the comments to uh, connect with him on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, type in the search bar, RV Electricity Mike Sokol. You'll get all the latest from the smartest man on earth when it comes to electricity, especially as it re relates to RVs. Again, go to YouTube in the search bar, type in RV Electricity Mike Sokol. <music>